Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing unique factorization domains. Okay, so we're in the process of proving that all principal ideal domains are unique factorization domains. Okay, so so far what we've proven is that if you take a non-zero, non-unit element of your principal ideal domain, that it is possible to write out a factorization in terms of irreducibles uh, for that element of the principal ideal domain. What I now want to prove is that this factorization in terms of irreducibles is unique up to the point that you can start fiddling around which associate that you are using for the irreducibles and also the unit that is out the front. Okay, right. Uh, so, uh, what we're going to use in this proof is big time is the fact that irreducibles are the same as primes in a principal ideal domain. So I'd like to just point that out right away. Okay, so we proved this in the video on primes and irreducibles, the previous video in this playlist on ring theory, that in a principal ideal domain, the definition of a prime and the definition of an irreducible is exactly the same. Okay, uh, well, then the definitions aren't the same, but they are equivalent definitions in a principal ideal domain. Okay, so if an element is prime and then principal ideal domain, then it will also be irreducible in the principal ideal domain, okay, and vice versa. Okay, and that's going to be really important now. Okay, so uh, let's um, take our element R then and factorize it into irreducibles. Okay, and let's suppose that we end up with two different ways to do this. So let's suppose we end up with one here, which is u times p1 to the power of alpha 1 times p2 to the power of alpha 2 times all the way along to pn to the power of alpha n here. Okay, so there's our first uh, factorization into irreducibles. And now let's suppose that we have another factorization into irreducibles here, uh, a different one. So v times q1 to the power of, let's say, e1 times q2 to the power of e2 times all the way along to qn to the power of en here. Okay, so we have these two different factorizations into irreducibles. Okay, and what I now want to prove is that they are equivalent to one another uh, in the way uh, that we have stated, i.e. that I can take this one and turn it into this one by fiddling around with which associates of these uh, irreducible elements that I'm using in this irreducible factorization here. Okay, so the two are equivalent to one another. Okay, so uh, how am I going to do this then? Well, what I should firstly note is that my elements are here. So let's start by looking at the top irreducible factorization here. Okay, the first thing I should note is that um, if we've got this P1 here, okay, so let's start with P1. So P1 appears in this irreducible factorization of R, this first irreducible factorization of R. Okay, now it could appear to a high power potentially, 3 or 4 or 5 maybe, uh, but it appears at least once, okay? Uh, so what, that, what I can now say is that R is going to be an element of the principal ideal generated by P1, okay, this irreducible P1. And that's simply because, look, R is written as a uh, multiple of P1, some element multiplied by P1. Okay, so clearly R is going to be an element of the principal ideal generated by P1. But now here's the point that I use the fact that irreducibles are the same as primes in a uh, principal ideal domain. Okay, because now this principal ideal generated by P1 in uh, the principal ideal domain is going to be a prime ideal, i.e. a, a well, specifically a non-zero prime ideal, okay? Because P1 was irreducible, that's the same as being prime in the principal ideal domain, and being prime means that you generate a principal ideal, which is a non-zero prime ideal. Okay, now remember, prime ideals have this special property that if you multiply two elements and end up with an answer that's in that prime ideal, then it implies that one or both of those elements that you multiplied together were already in that prime ideal. Now, without too much imagination, that can be generalized naturally to a finite product of uh, an arbitrary length, finite product of um, elements. Okay, so if you've got a product of a great big number of elements, such as, for instance, this product here, we've got a product of lots of elements in our principal ideal domain, okay, and that is giving something that's in this 
prime ideal, obviously, because R is this, and R is in the principal ideal generated by P1. So I've got a product here that ends up in the principal ideal generated by P1. What I can now conclude from this is that one of these elements that's in this product, at least, has to be in the prime ideal over here, has to be in the principal ideal generated by P1. Okay, so all things in this principal ideal generated by P1 are of the form some element of the uh, ring times P1, so a multiple of P1. So which element is it going to be? Well, it's not, of course, going to be the unit here, okay? Uh, so it must be one of these irreducibles in this irreducible factorization. So let's say it's, let's say QI. So there must be one of these irreducibles, let's call it QI, which is equal to a product um, of P1, okay? Some multiple of P1 in this way. Okay, now, what can we then conclude from this? Because we can conclude something from this. QI, remember, is an irreducible because it's in this irreducible factorization. The definition of irreducible is that if you have a product of two things that makes that element, one of them must be a unit. Now, P1 is not a unit, okay, because it was an irreducible itself. Uh, in this irreducible factorization, and irreducibles by definition are not units. Okay, so that must imply that A here is a unit. But now, what does that show us? I've got here that QI is just a unit times P1. So what I can now conclude is that QI is just an associate of P1, because that's the definition of an associate of uh, P1, that you're just a unit times P1. Okay, so what I can now do is take this QI here and substitute in A times P1. Take out the A to the front here, and now I've got a P1 appearing in my irreducible factorization here. So I've tinkered around with this irreducible factorization to get P1 appearing here. Okay, uh, and then of course what you can say is because these two are equal to one another, okay, uh, and now we've got P1 in both of them, you can cancel the P1 off because it's not equal to zero and we're working in an integral domain. After all, the principal ideal domain is an integral domain. And then you've got the remaining portion. What's left has to be equal to uh, each other. And then you can just continue this process off on. You can take another uh, irreducible that appears in here and then show that it must appear maybe in disguise. I, it might be appearing as an associate over here. And gradually you can work through all of the irreducibles here and say that they have to appear in some form over here. Okay, so you can find all of this irreducible factorization basically in here at some point. Okay, and then you can apply the same thing in reverse. You can say, okay, put this one in line one now and put this one in line two. You can apply the exact same thing and find all of the irreducibles here over here and therefore they are truly equivalent to one another. I can turn this one into this one and this one into this one back and forth. Okay, so if you have two uh, irreducible factorizations in this way in a uh, principal ideal domain, they must be unique. Okay, so we can therefore conclude in a unique fact, sorry, in a principal ideal domain that you can find firstly uh, these factorizations into irreducible elements, and secondly that they are unique up to this fact that you can tinker around with the associates. So if you have two uh, irreducible factorizations, you can turn one into the other just by tinkering around uh, with which associates you're using in the way that I've just described to you here. Okay, so what we have now successfully done is proven that a principal ideal domain is a unique factorization domain. Okay, so to end this, I'll just point out that the integers is a Euclidean domain, and therefore it's a principal ideal domain, because all Euclidean domains are principal ideal domains, and therefore it's a unique factorization domain. So uh, elements of the integers can be factorized in a unique way uh, into uh, a string of irreducibles, which are prime numbers in the context of the integers. Okay, um, and that then is a famous theorem known as the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, and it's a classical theorem, uh, a very basic theorem in number theory. Okay, and with that we will end this video on unique factorization domains.